Welcome everybody back to Boost Emotion, guys. And today, yeah, as the thumbnail says, I'm having some issues with my Mercedes C63. Guys, let's jump into the video. Welcome everybody back to Boost Emotion, guys. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Thank you. So, welcome back, welcome back, everybody. I'm having some issues with my Mercedes C63. But before I talk about it, uh, let me give you guys a quick startup, because, you know, it's a V8, why not? All right, guys, so let me do some housekeeping before I jump into the video. First thing, I appreciate you guys so much for always watching my videos. And if you guys, please hit the like button. If you've been watching my videos consistently, always hit the like button. It's the best way for my channel to continue to grow. Nobody knows about Boost unless you guys hit the channel. So my success is dictated by you guys' engagement. Anyways, let's jump right into the video. Let's talk about it. It's a little hot in here, so you may hear a little bit of the AC blowing. But anyways, what's going on? What's wrong? Like, like, Boost, why haven't you been out here racing people in your C63? You Low-key, you want to call out Slow Speed and a couple other people in the community because, you know, why not race content, right? And here's the thing. I'm having a couple of issues with the Bergen 2 and JV4. And first thing, I'm not here putting down the unit because some of you guys are like, tune only, tune only, gang. And then we got people who are bo uh, Boost Control again, which is a JV4, what it is. And I don't need you guys going back and forth about it. But in this video, I'm going to actually talk to you and let you guys know what's going on and the next couple of steps. Anyway, so first thing, um, I got the Burger Tuna JB4 a couple months back. And I never really got the time to drive the car and data log it and see how it's reacting in map one, map two. Now, I did the initial drive, which it did have added performance. But just because you turn up the boost doesn't mean that the car is running right. So I got some time out and I finally did a couple of pulls in Mexico and I was surprised. Here's what I'm gonna let you guys know. So in these couple of data logs, I don't think I'm gonna put a picture up or anything like that, but for the people who wanna know, um, you there's certain parameters you wanna look at on the JB4 boost controller to make sure that the car is running right, right? So what I noticed was when I turned the boost up, let's say map one, right? Uh, well, first thing you do a dad log in stock map. You just want to see how the car is reacting, boost, AFRs. Everything was good. The car is pulling fine. Then I went to map one, which is like three or four PSI above stock. And immediately, yes, I had a more performance. But what I realized is that the car started going a little bit more on the rich side, which is pretty common when you turn up the boost controller almost, or to turn up the boost on almost any car when it's not a full fledged tune. But because it was doing so, right? What happened next was the fuel trims were right where they're supposed to be. The AFR started going more to the rich side, which is good. It's good that your AFRs go to more to the rich side. You're less prone to knock. But what I realized, ignition timing really wasn't coming up. The thing is, guys, when the RPM goes up, usually you would want the ignition timing to get a little bit faster or a higher percentage of ignition timing up to a higher rev range. And what I noticed was that it kept on staying low, about five degrees. And I'm like, that's not good, because that means that you're not getting the proper amount of performance. There may be small amount of knock going on, not necessarily, but let's say the timing goes up to 10 and it pegs back down before before you get to high RPM. Those are usually, I would consider, um, little knock events or detonation events. I don't think anything crazy or serious, but the car isn't run at, at, as best as it actually should. Bear being like, let me close this up. Got a little bit of glare and everything like that. So I noticed that, and I'm like, all right, let me do it. Maybe, 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 maybe I need to like turn it. Let me turn it up a little bit more. So then I ran map two just to see, and I realized that it was only getting worse. And I'm like, damn, this is map one and map two, and I'm already having these issues. So I said, all right, that's not gonna work out. Maybe it's the fuel. Maybe it might just be the fuel. So I waited till one tank actually completely went through. All right, remember I have two cars, so it's hard to like go through a full tank of gas on a V8, even though it's a V8 twin turbo, it's still hard to go through so much gas. So anyways, oh, bear with me, let me park somewhere else. So what happened next was, excuse me guys. <clears throat> so once I got the new tank of 93 fuel, I did dialogue in once again, map one, I mean map zero. 
perfectly fine. Went to map two now, once again. I mean, map one and map two, same thing kept on happening. AFRs are going deep into the high tens, uh, low 11s. And anybody who knows about tuning knows that that's, that's, too, that's too rich. And the, what the car would actually start doing, what I noticed is that it started limiting the percentage of the throttle body. What does that actually mean? So on map zero, the throttle body, when I peg the, um, when I give it 100% throttle, right? I mean, uh, gas, the throttle bodies would start open, would start closing halfway. And as the RPM starts to go up, or let's say the RPM starts to go up, and let's just, and there's the ignition timing's going up slowly, the throttle body percentage started opening. So what I'm saying here is this. This car is very intelligent. This car is very, very intelligent. My uh, Q60, Q50 wouldn't do this. It would still peg the throttle body open, but this car is picking up whatever percentage of ignition time it's looking for. And if it doesn't get that, it limits the amount of throttle body percentage. So the throttle bodies were essentially closing or being partially open, even though my gas pedal is fully um, depressed which means I'm not getting a proper amount of performance. So one of the runs, I would say the car ran, I think one of the runs the car started noticing like, okay, we're getting a little bit of ignition timing. So start opening the throttle body even more, like 70, like 60 to 70 percentage. Once I noticed that, I was like, the car literally, I'm, I'm in the middle of the run, the car was just like, and I literally start, I literally felt the power completely changed once ignition timing was started going up with the rpm and i was and the throttle body is opening a little bit more and this is during a second to third gear pull um you know in mexico so now that i sat down thought about it i said okay now what have you learned from specifically the c63 number one it is very big on ignition timing yes we already know that in tuning but Q50s, Q60s are not as sophisticated. You can literally throw bad boost at it and initial time will damage, keep at zero and the car would, wouldn't really want to protect itself. The C63 is not having that. So once I noticed that, I said, all right, cool. Maybe 93 fuel may not be enough. So in the future, I'm going to have to see maybe if I can run like an E20 mix, add a little bit of E85 to the 93 fuel, maybe to a bump of the octane or an octane booster such as boosting or any other type of octane boosting, like endo race gas, but I'll probably do like a boostane or E20-ish mix just to bump up the octane a little bit so I can see if the car will still do what it's doing. Um, so that's one of the things I'm considering doing um, in the future. And that's why I'm saying I'm having an issue with the JB4 boost controller. Um, because of this though, it makes me honestly want to look in more into tuning and the different tunes for this car because on the Q50, Q60 platform, it just it just still does it. You can still learn from it. But with this platform, that's gonna limit a lot of consistent performance. Because if I'm gonna have to have high octane fuel, right? Just so that the car can give me the beans when it needs to, I might just need to go get a full-fledged tune where it's actually optimized based on my fueling all the time. Which we cannot, I know you guys are gonna drive me and say, but that's what you should do in the first place. I get it. But I like to learn about the car first, and the boost controllers are one of the best, or at least the JB4 boost controllers is one of the best ways to learn how the car is reacting to the fuel and know what's going on. Because some of you guys just go get a tune, y'all know nothing what's going on. And sometimes, to be honest with you, they just all they're doing is just turning up the boost and making some tweaks to the timing. All right? Um, so the next part I also want to add is I've been having a huge issue with Bluetooth connectivity. Um, connecting the phone to the JB4 boost controller. Like when I first got it, it would just connect instantly. But as time went in the last couple months, it would be like, okay, we can connect today, we can't connect today. So I'll turn the car off, maybe turn it on. Maybe I thought that the OBD may shut off after a certain period of time if it's plugged in. And it would do that intermittently. Uh, but now in the last two to three weeks, it wouldn't connect at all, period. So luckily the car is in map zero for now because I drove around map zero. I don't want the car doing any random issues, but it doesn't connect at all. So I contacted Burger Tuning. They stated that they're going to send me out a new Bluetooth uh, device because they think that the Bluetooth, because what they realized is that the my, my uh, app is sending out the signal to the Bluetooth, 
and it is sending it out. So that part is working. And it'll say, all right, connecting. And it'll say, awaiting, awaiting a handshake. Pretty much the, the device communicating back. So they're gonna send me out a new Bluetooth device and that's gonna allow me to um, download the car and just make sure it's running right and see, no, see if I can have better connectivity. So that's the other part of the saga that we're actually looking at. So when it comes down to these two things, yes, that's the issues I'm having with the C63. The car is running right. It's running good. I have no issues, at least as of right now, with the C63. Remember, I do have um, secondary catalyst. I also do have intakes. Um, also, for the guys who want to know, I did the, uh, the dialoguing that I did was before the intakes and or after the intakes. So it hasn't changed the performance. It still was doing the same thing for both modifications regardless. So no, moving forward, we're going to wait for the Bluetooth device and we're still going to reconnect that. And then once again, try maybe an E20 makes a little bit of E85. Not like an E30 because these cars are finicky. Uh, from what I've learned, they like literally don't really like anything past E30 because it's like their low pressure fuel pump isn't has enough pressure. So I'm just gonna add like maybe one or two gallons to the 93 fuel just to bump up the octane a little bit. That should actually help a little bit or uh, race gas or and or boostane. I would add just a tank just to get to bump up that octane level just to make sure the car is running right. Um, but um, out, excuse me. But outside of that, I am looking into different companies with different tunes for the C63. Oh uh, man, the prices are definitely all over the place. But knowing me. I know they have mail-in tunes for these cars, but I don't want that. I want a full-fledged dyno tune. It's gonna give you the optimum amount of performance for your conditions compared to a uh, regular mail-in tune. But outside of that, guys, I'm probably gonna make that a separate video talking about the different tunes um, and prices for the C63 or the M177 in the future. So if you guys wanna tap in for that, you already guys already know what to do. Hit the subscribe button with the bell notification. And always hit all. When you hit that bell, you have to hit all two. That's the only way you guys are going to get any information. If not, you're not going to get anything. So, um, once again, I'm super appreciative of all you guys always bang with your boy Boost. You already know what to do. Contact me at Boost Emotion IG, Facebook, and Boost Emotion at gmail.com. Um, please, guys, if you can subscribe, I'm trying to get to 50,000 subscribers at the end of the year. I'm taking my time. I know slow progress is still progress regardless. And I'm just thankful for you guys always banging with your boy Boost. So, outside of that, guys, you have a good morning, good afternoon, good night. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate you guys always being part of the Boost Emotion family. You guys have a good day. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Do appreciate you guys. Love you guys very much. You can also check out the two links I posted for some of my other videos. Also, on top of that, if you want to purchase some Boost Emotion merch, definitely check the link that I posted also. And finally, if you've been watching all my videos and you enjoy them, please hit the link for to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you. Thank you.